Psalms 149 says, Hallelujah, sing to the Lord a new song, his praises in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel celebrate its maker, let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and he adores the humble with salvation. Let the faithful celebrate and let them shout for joy. Amen? Amen. So this means that to morning, this morning we need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He don't want to hear us just sitting here. He wants to get some praises. Praise him for all that you've gone through this week and you made it. You got to see another day. That's enough to give God all the glory and all of the praise. Amen? Let's go before his throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into this vessel and lay our burdens down at your feet. We thank you, God, that you're turning each and every situation around to your glory. We thank you, Lord, that we can praise you with all that is in us. We ask on today, God, that you show up and show out in this service. Bless us, God, abundantly above anything that we can ever even imagine. But most of all, God, we ask that we don't leave the same way that we came, that when the word of God goes forth, God, it makes a difference in our lives. So we thank you on today, God, for what you're going to do in this service. We thank you on today, God, for showing up and showing out. And we thank you most of all, God, for the miracles that are going to go forth, for the healing, the deliverance, and the salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. This is the day that God has made. So we're going to rejoice and be glad. Oh, hallelujah. All right, this is the day that the Lord has made. Will you rejoice and be glad in it? Be grateful that he woke you up this morning. That's enough to praise him for. Because he didn't have to do it. All right, now, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 
will have announcements. On behalf of Pastor Maurice and First Lady Renita, we welcome you to the New Liberty Church Baptist Church worship experience. To those of you that are joining us in person or electronically, we are so glad that you decided to worship with us today. To God be the glory for you being here and for him being here first. Amen? Amen. Our church has a continued theme for, from 2022. This year, 2023, we are continuing to strive to become more mature disciples in Christ. With that being said, we provide a number of ways to assist you in this journey of your Christian growth. Immediately after service, we have the Rosie Weathersby Sunday School Hour classes available for all ages. There is an adult Sunday school class. There is the Breakfast Club. There is Light of the World and also Angels in Space. You can attend these classes in person or virtually via the Zoom platform. On Wednesdays at 12 noon, we have a midday Bible study facilitated by Deacon Elder Bernardo in our multi-purpose room. Also on Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., we have the Bible Power Hour. Those classes are virtual only and your VIP invitation has been sent to either your email or you receive them by way of your one call reminders. Amen? Uh, and with all that being said, if you need to update your contact information so that you can get these schedules, please do so. Um, I need to put a stick a pin there and do a brief apology. There was a um, misannouncement in the announcement that came out this past Wednesday, and the meeting ID was incorrect. So for all of you that were um, inconvenienced, we apologize. I apologize. That was me. I probably recognize my voice, right? Okay. <laughs> People of God, we know that prayer changes things. Please, please, please take the privilege of prayer seriously. We're living in a day and time now where you cannot pray in public. You can't say the name of Jesus in public. It's like they're trying to stifle the voice of Christ, but we know we don't have to say it out loud. We can go in our private closets and pray, and prayer does change things. In addition to that, on Thursdays at 6 a.m. and at 6 p.m., we have a dedicated prayer line. That phone number is 1-617-691-8170. Again, the number for the dedicated prayer line is one 617 691-8170. Please join us for corporate and intercessory prayer sessions. Pray for our sick. Pray for our shut-ins. Pray for our bereaved. Pray for our homeless. Pray for our helpless. Pray for our elders. Pray for our children. Pray, pray for our pastor and our first lady. Pray for each other, but by all means, pray. Pray, family, pray. This church, our church, by the grace of God, will celebrate 85 years of existence. Amen? 85 years. Just in case you need a little help realizing that blessing, let me just give you a couple of things that might enlighten you. God has seen this church through 85 years of trials and tribulations. Amen? Amen. God has seen this church through challenges and changes in choice. Amen? Amen. God has seen us through 85 years of attitudes and adjustments. Amen. amen. God has seen this church through. Would you, can I get an amen on that? Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you. Now, this does not come by happenstance. It comes by commitment and it comes by work. So I encourage you to revisit your commitment to be a financial blessing to this church. Please give cheerfully, give your tithes, give your offerings. You can give while you're here. You can mail your, your tithes and offering in. 
The address is 2965 Meldrum, Detroit 48207. You can even give from the comfort of your home by going to our website at newliberty.org and selecting the online giving tab. So there is no shortage of ways for you to give. Please do so with a cheerful heart. On this coming Saturday, the mission will be hosting the Spring Clothing Giveaway. Amen? Amen. This is a diligent work that they extend themselves to to help be a help to our community. That endeavor will be from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Now, they're asking for donations, but if you're going to donate, please have your donations here by 10 o'clock that morning. Also, they are asking for volunteers to help facilitate this giveaway, so give of your time if you are available, and we would greatly appreciate that. On Saturday, we also have the hustle class at 11 a.m., and again on Saturday, we have the Sunday morning worshipers choir rehearsal. For anyone who wants to join, there is a sign-up sheet in the lobby, and for the summer only, those uh, rehearsals, I'm sorry, did I say that the rehearsal is at 1 o'clock on Saturday? Okay, so for the summer, for all of you who are wishing to join, the rehearsal will change from Saturday to, to Monday evenings at 7.30 p.m., correct? Amen. Amen. So get your voices tuned up. Come on now. They could, we could use, they could, we could use your support. Pardon me. Starting when? I'll get back to you on that, okay? Happy birthday blessings to all of you who are celebrating a birthday this week. God bless you. Happy birthday. And to all of you who are celebrating an anniversary this week, happy anniversary. May God continue to bless your marriage and refresh your love and commitment to him and each other, just like he did on the day you said, I do. How about that? <laughs> your mental health tip for this week, take time to give and encourage yourself. Coming from 1 Samuel 30 and 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord. His God, when times get tough, remember to encourage yourself and remind yourself of the truth. We help have a mantra to help you with that, and it states this, I will not give in to sadness. I will not let my thoughts control the way I feel. I will never, ever give up. I will stay positive and work on a solution. My life is great with all the positives and negative things in it. I allow myself to be happy no matter what. I am enough and I am complete. Amen. Amen. Our thought for the week from Sister Olivia Featherstone, when you pray, God listens. When you listen, God talks. When you believe, God works. Amen. 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 Finally, don't forget Sister Carrie's food, fruit, and vegetable table before you go home. Bless you, Sister Carrie. We thank you for sharing what God has put not only in your hand but in your heart. Thank you so much. This concludes our announcements, and it's back in the hands of the praise team. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes. It was his grace and mercy that brought us this far. Praise God, adoration and honor to the Lamb of God.
locked up in jail because of God's grace. Some of you not buried in the cemetery because of God's grace. Some of y'all not homeless today because of God's grace. God's grace. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all that have gathered in the sanctuary today. Good morning to all that have joined us virtually. Good day to all that shall join us virtually at a later date. We are praying for and praying with Sister Paris, the daughter of Sister Dawn Howard, and the granddaughter of Sister Liz Williams, who sustained injuries from an auto accident. The favor of God was truly with her. We are praying for Mother Bet Betty Webb, who is in good spirits. We are praying for Reverend Collins, who is home from the hospital and getting stronger each day. And we would like to wish him, if he's listening, a happy, I believe I got the number right, 93rd birthday. We are praying for my cousin Steve Branch in Port St. Lucie, Florida, who was also blessed to walk away from a rollover hit and run accident. He too is in good spirits.
But as the praise seemed just rendered unto us, it was by God's grace. Let's turn our attention to the word of God. Say my little thing and I'm going to get out of your way. Turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel of John, chapter 21. We thank God for healing. First Lady has made her way back. I think her and mom was colluding today. They both got on black and white. I don't know what. Amen. John chapter 21. I encourage you to read the entire chapter, but for our time today in reading, I want to read just the first three verses and then verse 14 first three verses of John 21 and then verse 14. From the NIV translation it reads, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were to go. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Go down to verse 14, it says, this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. You may be seated. Real quick, I wanna talk from this thought. Jesus is not done yet. <laughs> Jesus ain't done yet. I, I, I had to pronounce it the correct way for all you English majors and, and professors that are listening. Jesus is not done yet. But when I just wanna be 100, Jesus ain't done yet. Jesus ain't done yet. So here we are, one week after Resurrection Sunday. I want to start by asking a few rhetorical questions for you to think about. How are you today, exactly one week after Resurrection Sunday? Is the excitement of the resurrection still with you? Has it begun to fade? Has it vanished altogether? I ask these questions because mankind in general has a tendency to lose interest in or excitement in things or events that have come and gone. We wait with anticipation for our birthdays to come and when they come and go, it's back to business as usual. For those that are still in the workforce, and they work a traditional Monday through Friday work schedule. We wait with anticipation for Friday to come because Friday signals the beginning of the weekend. We are good until Sunday evening comes because now we find ourselves getting ready for Monday morning because Monday morning signals us that things are going back to business as usual. One of this country's most watched sporting events is the NFL Super Bowl. There is always a great buildup to the Super Bowl. This year, there were many TV ads at a cost of $7 billion for a 30 second spot on TV. Super Bowl parties were being planned. Food and beverages of all kinds were being purchased. Some hotel reservations and Super Bowl tickets were being purchased. Football jerseys and other football paraphernalia were being purchased at a cost of approximately 16 plus billion dollars. The halftime show was being hyped up. You gotta watch it, you gotta see it. 
all of this and more to promote participation and following of the Super Bowl. But once the game was over, as the days after came and passed, the interest in the game that had been played began to fade. Folks stopped talking about the game. They stopped talking about the halftime show. They stopped talking about the commercials. Why? The game was over. It was time to go back to business as usual. I want to submit to you today that the Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, we should not go back to business as usual. And the reason we should not go back to business as usual is Jesus ain't done yet. The resurrection season had a buildup. It started with Lenten season, where some gave up and sacrificed something they liked in order to connect with God spiritually. Then came Palm Sunday, where we commemorate and remember Jesus' triumph from entry into Jerusalem. It was followed by Good Friday, as we remember Jesus being crucified for our behalf and the words that he spoke as he hung on the cross. Crucifixion was followed by burial in a borrowed tomb. And I like how the text says borrowed because Jesus wasn't gonna need it for very long. But then the big event came. The event that one everyone should have been waiting on but really didn't anticipate because they didn't pay attention to what Jesus had been saying all along. Jesus got up. Jesus got up. Jesus got up out the grave. Jesus appeared first to the women. Let me pause right there. If there's anything that you ought to celebrate women, you ought to celebrate the fact that it was women. It was women. Y'all don't know where to shout. It was women that first got a glimpse of the risen Savior. And then the disciples got to see Jesus. Jesus came and met them where they were. When Jesus met the disciples, he told them to wait here in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Spirit will come. But something happened in their waiting. They got fidgety. They, 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 get, they got antsy. They, 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 they just couldn't wait no more. And so the spokesman of the group, Peter, and every group has a Peter. Every family has a Peter. Every church has a Peter. Y'all ain't gonna pray today. Peter spoke up and told the boys, I'm going fishing. I ain't got nothing else better to do. I think I'll go fish. And in my mind, I can see the other disciples look at one another and they said to Peter, we going with you. We going with you. Their actions of going fishing, for me, is their way of saying it's back to business as usual. But I got news for the disciples and those disciples that have gathered today, Jesus ain't done yet. Look at John 21, those first three verses again. It says, afterward, Jesus again appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It was Simon, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were there. Peter said, I'm going fishing. The disciple says, we going with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. They went out to go fishing. But they didn't catch anything. 
They went out to go fishing, but they didn't catch anything. I didn't write this down, but let me share with you since it's coming across my mind. Sometimes you go out, but God wanted you to stay in. Sometimes we move, but God wanted you to sit still. Sometimes we sit still, but God wants us to move. God ain't done yet. Next thing you'll learn when we look at these three verses is they were supposed to wait for the promise, but they weren't fishing, and they didn't catch anything. When the Lord tells us to do something, it would be in our best interest to do what he tells us to do. Because the disciples decided to go fishing instead of waiting for the promise, they didn't catch anything. When we follow our fleshly desire, instead of following the lead of the Holy Spirit, we will catch nothing. When we do things our way, instead of God's way, we will catch nothing. Many are trying to figure out why their blessings aren't coming their way or coming to pass, but I got one thing to say to you. The re one reason you may not be experiencing your blessing is because you're too busy living the life you want to live. And God ain't going to bless just any mess. And you ain't going to catch anything. You put your trust in self. You ain't going to catch anything. You put yourself, your trust in your car. You ain't going to catch anything. You put your trust in other things and other people, you ain't going to catch anything. I don't have anything wrong with tradition, but when tradition trumps God, you ain't going to catch anything. I love some traditions, but tradition don't come before God. God comes before tradition. Take heart. Don't lose hope. The Lord ain't done yet. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says this. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Point number two. Sometimes when we decide to go fishing in our spiritual life, Jesus ends up standing on the shore of our life but we don't realize it's him. Have you ever been somewhere you knew you weren't supposed to be and something in you told you you ought not be here? You know what that was? That was Jesus standing on the shore while you were fishing where you weren't supposed to be. Have you ever heard a voice tell you something just ain't right? with the situation you were faced with or confronted with or engaged in, that was Jesus standing on the shore. Have you ever made a decision to do something and you knew it was the wrong decision to make, but you made it anyway, and then your, consci your conscience got the best of you? You know what that was? That was Jesus standing on the shore trying to tell you and warn you your decision is going to take you the wrong direction. In other words, when Jesus is standing on the shore, he's standing on the shore to tell us, I ain't done yet. Whenever we disengage from the Lord, he stands on the shore waiting us to re-engage because he's telling us he ain't done yet. Look at verse 5 and 6. 5 and 6 says this, he called out to them, this is Jesus. Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Let me pause just to make this comment. I didn't write it down. Jesus asked the question that he already knew the answer to. That may not mean nothing to y'all, but that, that really tickles me. Jesus asked the question that he already knew the answer to. And so they responded, no, 
We ain't caught nothing. So Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some fish. Some of y'all just missed that. Because early when they first got together, when Jesus got the boys together, when Peter got called, they couldn't catch anything. And Jesus said, let's go back out. And Peter was like, well, we ain't getting nothing in. What makes you think we're going to get something out? Jesus said, let's just go. Then Jesus said, cast your nets on the right side of the boat. In the text, the right side means a certain position of the boat. But spiritually, the right side means cast it to the side that Jesus tells you to cast it on. Watch this. The third thing you will notice that Jesus ain't done yet is that he will encourage you along the way. Jesus asked the disciples, have you caught anything? They said, no, not yet. Watch this. Disciples, then, then you, you, you need to understand that the disciples, they, they fished all night. They didn't know if they were going to catch anything or not. Surely they got discouraged because when you out all night long, all night long, y'all ain't going to pray with me. When you are all night long and you ain't caught nothing, you get discouraged. See, let me go back in some of y'all past. Let me go back in some of y'all past. When you hung out all night long and you didn't hook up with the one you thought you were going to hook up with, y'all ain't got to pray with me. When you hung out all night long and you didn't get that high that you thought you were going to get, you got disappointed. When you hung out all night long and you could drink enough to get that feeling you really wanted to have, you were disappointed when the morning came. When you hung out all night long and woke up in the morning and had nothing to show for it but a hangover, y'all ain't gonna pray today. But watch this. Even though they hung out all night long, Jesus said, cast your net on the right side of the boat because there's a blessing waiting on you. Jesus is telling him, I ain't done yet. You thought I did something when I healed the man with the withered hand. You, you thought I did something when I healed the woman with the issue of blood. You thought I did something when I raised Lazarus from the dead. I ain't done yet. You thought it was something when you saw me resurrected for the first time. But I ain't done yet. I still got a lot of miracles to do in your life. All I need you to do is listen to what I'm telling you and cast the net on the right side of the boat. Now, they didn't catch anything. They didn't catch anything. But watch this, verse 7. When they caught it, they caught so much that the nets were full. The nets were full. There was a large number of fish they caught. And verse 7 says this. The disciple who Jesus, Jesus loved said to Peter, and this was John, John said to Peter, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Only the Lord could tell us where to go fish and catch fish. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, the scripture says he wrapped his outer garment around him and he jumped into the water and swam the shore. Some of y'all caught that. Some of y'all caught that. Some of y'all catching up. Let me help you. When you realize it's Jesus on the shore, you ain't worried about the fish in the net. You just trying to get to where Jesus is. Now watch this. Watch this. There's a reason Peter was getting to where Jesus was. He ain't going to wait for the boat to row in. Peter, Peter put on his coat and jumped in the water and started swimming. See, Peter is doing what most of us are still doing today. Jesus has forgiven us, but Peter ain't forgive himself yet. And so Peter, every chance he get, is trying to get to Jesus because he feels bad that he denied Jesus three times. 
He didn't say, hey, fellas, roll the boat back in. No, he got his stuff and he booked. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When you see Jesus, when you recognize his Jesus, you ain't got to wait for nobody to get yourself to Jesus. Let me see if I can put it another way. You ain't got to wait for the deacons to pray to get to Jesus. You ain't got to wait for the preacher to preach to get to Jesus. You ain't got to wait for the choir or praise team to sing to get to Jesus. You don't have to wait on anybody. If you recognize Jesus, get on, get to him as fast as you can. When you recognize it's Jesus, you ought to be like Peter and want to jump in the water and get to where he is. Now watch this. The rest of, the, rest of those verses says this. Verse 8, 9, 10, 11 says this, the other disciples followed in the boat. The other disciples followed in the boat. <laughs> Peter left. The other disciples followed the boat, and they're towing the net full of fish. But they weren't far from shore. But verse 9 says, when they landed, they saw a fire burning of coals, and there were fish on it and some bread. Let me pause right there. Jesus wasn't done yet. When he asked them, have y'all caught anything? He already had fish frying. When he asked them, have you caught anything yet? He had bread ready for when they came in. I think y'all missed it. They thought it was over because they didn't catch anything. They thought it was over because the net was now full. But Jesus had already, before they caught anything, prepared them a meal. You thought your situation had you at your wit's end. It ain't over with yet. You thought your circumstance got the best of you. It ain't over with yet. You thought sickness was going to take you out. It ain't over with yet. Verse 10 says this, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. <laughs> now watch this. In my mind, why are you going to cook more fish when you got fish already cooking? <laughs> but here's what I believe in my heart. Jesus wanted them to know that I had all along what you needed but then I gave you more than what you needed. So let's eat what you didn't need so it don't go to waste. Now watch this. Jesus said, let me read verse 10 again, then verse 11. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. Now remember, Peter didn't swarm ahead. He's already at the shore with Jesus. The disciples are coming in with the boat. And as they get to the shore, Jesus says, bring some of the fish you caught. Peter didn't wait for them. I just had a moment, first lady. <laughs> Peter didn't wait for them to get the net of fish out the boat. Peter jumped in the boat and drove the net himself to the shore. Y'all just missed it. Y'all miss, watch this. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, bring me some fish you just caught. Peter didn't wait. He didn't think. He acted. He jumped in the boat and got the fish that just caught. The other disciples probably were worried about, we got to tie the boat down so it don't get away. We got to do this. We got to do this. Peter said, skip all of that. Jesus just said, give me some of the fish you just caught. A way you know that Jesus ain't done yet is when you got a desire to do what he tells you to do and you ain't going to question it. You got a desire to jump in right then and there and make it happen. When Jesus speaks, you're going to leap. If he says jump, you're going to jump. If he says sit, you're going to sit. 
If he says run, you're going to run. If he says wave your hand, you're going to wave your hand. If he says open your mouth, you're going to open your mouth. Peter was ready. Here's why he was ready. He wanted to prove to Jesus, I ain't going to let you down ever again. I'm just not going to do it. So whatever you tell me, I'm going to do what you said do. Finally, as I skip down to verse 14, the verse says this. Now this was the third time, not the first, not the second, but this was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The disciples thought that they had seen Jesus for the last time when he first showed himself. But Jesus came again and showed himself a second time. And Jesus showed himself a third time. And they heard rumors of Jesus being seen elsewhere. And then in the beginning of Acts, they see Jesus for the last time as he's ascending to heaven. But what Jesus' appearances was telling the disciple is, I'm not done showing you that I'm with you. I'm not done letting you know that I'm fighting with you. In other words, the Lord wants us to know today that he ain't done manifesting his presence for us. When you're feeling all alone, but God picks your spirit up, there's Jesus with you. When you come to the end of your rope and you don't know which way to go and you feel like letting go, Jesus says, hold on, because I got you. That's Jesus saying, I'm not done yet. When you get to a place where you're financially distraught, you don't know which bill to pay, you don't know if you're going to pay it, but somehow Jesus makes a way, that's Jesus saying, I got this. I ain't done yet. When you're trying to figure out what's wrong in your body, sickness is ravaging you, pain is ravaging you, you don't know what to do, the doctors don't know what to do, you call on the name of Jesus, he said, I got this, I ain't done yet. When you're trying to figure out why your job ain't what it's supposed to be, you got all kind of enemies on your job, and you're trying to figure out what did I do to them, it ain't that you did something to them, it's they don't like who they see in you that's walking with you, and they're trying to take you out. But Jesus says, I'm going to keep you from hurt, harm, and danger in that environment because I ain't done with you yet. We need to understand that he ain't done yet. There's still a lot more to come as it relates to Jesus. Yes, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday on last week, and we should have. Yes, we should still be excited about the resurrection of Jesus. Yes, we should, but Jesus ain't done yet. He still got a lot more miracles to perform. He still got a lot of things to rectify. He still got a lot of souls to save. He still got a lot of encouragement to do. But here's the event that we all should be waiting for. Jesus says, I'm coming back to get you myself. That where I am, you may be also. I'm waiting for that event. The day where Jesus come. And if I'm in the grave, he says, the dead in Christ shall get up first. The dead in Christ gonna get up first. But don't get happy if you're dead in Christ because you ain't gonna see Jesus before I see Jesus. You just gonna get up first. But you ain't gonna see him first because Jesus don't want you bragging about seeing him first. He wants all his children to see him together. So the dead are gonna get up first, but they that remain are gonna be caught up with the dead that got up and we gonna see Jesus together but watch this it ain't done yet it ain't done yet because now we gotta stand in the final judgment before the great white throne and we're going to find out where we're going to spend eternity. And there are going to be a whole lot of folk that we thought going to heaven that ain't going to heaven. 
A whole lot of preachers that preach many sermons, they ain't going to heaven. A whole lot of deacons that did a whole lot of praying ain't going to heaven. A whole lot of mothers on the mother's board ain't going to heaven. A whole lot of trustees that thought they were trusted ain't going to heaven because they're standing for the great white throne of judgment and God is revealing everything that they ever did. But the main thing they forgot to do was trust in Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. But then there are going to be some of us uh, that trust in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And he's going to say to us, come ye blessed of my father's children. Come ye blessed of my father's children. Come ye blessed of my father's children. I only said it three times because some of y'all ain't excited. Because see, I'm excited because he's going to tell me, come ye blessed of my father's children. I know you messed up from time to time, but here's the difference. You got up and trusted me you got up and you repented you got up and you kept walking the walk and talking the talk so come on in to my father's house he ain't done yet he ain't done yet and even when he lets us go into his house God still ain't done yet because the Bible says we are gonna reign with him Forever and ever. And ever. Forever and ever. I don't know how long that is. I just know that it's a long time. And I'm going to reign with Jesus forever and ever and ever with peace, with joy, with happiness, with no sickness with no distress, with no depression, with no violence, with no government, with no entities, no Republicans, no Democrats, no independents, no politics. I'm gonna be with Jesus forever and ever and ever. And the Bible says, amen, amen, amen. He ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We want to extend an invitation. Maybe you thought Jesus was done. He ain't done yet. There's a lot more Jesus need from you. There's a lot more Jesus wants to give to you. But you have to make a decision to follow him. I don't care how long you've been in church. Might be time for you to let the church get in you. I don't care how much wrong you've done in the world. Jesus says, I am willing and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. But you got to make the first step. If you're here today, if you want to make Jesus your choice, you can come. If you're here today, you want to make Jesus your choice, you can come. God bless you. If you're here today, you can come. You can come. For those that have joined us virtually, you can come as well. Here's how you can come. Pray this prayer with me, if you will, if you joined us virtually. Say this, Father, I am a sinner. I submit my life to you. I pray that you come into my life this day and allow me to grow in your mercy and your grace. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you joined us virtually and you prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, you have just become part of the family of God. Someone that joined us virtually and said, well, I don't feel any change yet. Don't worry about the feeling. The feeling comes later. You made a conscious decision for Jesus and that's what he wants. Don't worry, feeling will come. 
what I need you to do now that you made that conscious decision is to join a Bible believing and teaching church where you can learn more about God's mercy and his grace. If for whatever reason you don't find a Bible believing and teaching church, you're more than welcome to join this Bible believing church, te teaching church. Just call us at 313 9210118313921018 and someone will return your call. If you're in the sanctuary, you still can come. If you're in the sanctuary, you still can come. God bless you. You may be seated. Erica Witherspoon coming as a candidate for baptism. And these are the grandchildren of Sister Barbara Miles. Amen. Sister Gladdy Miles. Amen. God bless you both. Pastor? Yes, sir. Sister Gladdy Miles is asking for prayer for her son, Jarrell Miles. He's still struggling with the loss of his fiance. And he's very depressed, and we want to pray for him. Amen. 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 I'm going to pray for him, but Gladys, I need you to tell him Jesus ain't done yet. Amen. I know. I, I can't imagine what he's the ordeal he's coping with. We each have to deal with what we deal with in our way. But here's what I know: no matter what you're dealing with, I, I, he ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. She's waving. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, whew, I'm just so full right now. I was standing here next to Deacon Foster and looking at sisters. I said, You think we're going to the pool? He said, Yes. Yes. So when Sheila said, Candidate for baptism. Yeah. Now watch this. I'm excited, as much as I'm excited for the baptism, I'm excited for the Christian experience. Y'all going. I think we do a disservice for those that are in the body of Christ and we put too much pressure on them to say, hey, you gotta look like this, you gotta walk like this, you gotta talk like this. But the reality is Jesus ain't done with us yet. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our sister who come to be a part of our family. We ask, O oh God, now that you would just quicken her spirit, give her peace and joy. Give her peace, O oh Lord, relaxation, 
let her rest in you, O oh God. Even as the enemy tries to destroy her, we ask that you will protect her, Lord. Cover her head, her feet, her back, and her front. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our young sister who has submitted her life to Christ and she's going to be baptized. We pray, oh God, that you will just encamp all around her. Do not let the enemy try to discourage her from the decision that she has made. Father, we thank you for Sister Gladdy today. We ask your blessings upon her son. We ask, oh God, that you would just begin to move in his spirit, that you would comfort him. Lord, I don't know what he's dealing with. I don't know the pain that he's in, 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 involved with, but I do know this, you ain't done yet. But Lord, as we trust in you, you will make a way. And not only will you make a way, as they used to say, you'll make a way out of no way. I don't know what no way looks like, but whatever it looks like, you are gonna make a way. We thank you for all the believers of Christ today. We thank you for every decision that has been made to come to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if y'all follow our clerk. Amen. Prayerfully, our sister will be ready the first Sunday to be baptized. Amen. We're going to take her to the water the first Sunday if she's prepared to do so. Amen. Amen. Watch this. When an athlete in basketball score a basket and it's your team, we jump up and shout. Yeah. When a football player runs the ball, makes a touchdown, and it's your team, we jump up. Yeah. When a baseball player hits a home run, and it's our team, we jump up. Yeah. But when Jesus hits a home run and brings a, 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 a young lady by Christian experience and a young lady to be baptized, we get this. One day we gonna be like those that's in the world and we gonna jump up, yeah! But watch this, I'ma be like Peter. I'm not gonna wait for y'all in the boat. I'ma go head on and go, yeah! All by myself. God is still doing his thing. And I'm asking God to help me do what I need to do in his behalf. I want to encourage every believer, every believer, to keep walking with God. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Because God ain't done yet. He ain't done yet. Amen. Praise team coming to give us our closing worship song. We ask that everyone in the sanctuary remain seated as we will dismiss in an orderly fashion until we come together again to worship the Lord of our salvation. May God be with you and remember. He ain't done yet. Amen. All of us can use some blessed assurance. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on.